In this session, I'm going to change speed a little bit. We've been doing a lot of um, aerobatic stuff, playing with aerobatic moves up in the air. And I do think those have a lot of value for, for helping you understand how the copter moves and, and how it translates thrust into motion. But in this session, we're going we're gonna to shift gears a tiny bit, and we're going to do something a little lower to the ground and a little more precise. So I'm going to take off and fly in the meadow. Let's see, where is it? In the meadow, there is this uh, four-post gate. And what I want you to do is I want you to fly this pattern through it. So fly through it, turn around, and come back through it the other way, 90 degrees. And then turn the other direction, and come back through it the other way, 90 degrees. And what I want you to try to do is end the turn lined up on it as best you can. In other words, I'm going to overshoot here. I'm going to swing wide and overshoot. Do you see how I'm left of it now and I have to pull back to get back to it? I'm going to do it again. I'm going to come swing too wide and overshoot. See, I'm going to miss it, right? I'm not lined up on it. <clears throat> Whereas if I do this correctly, I should finish the turn. There we go. I should come out of the turn basically right on it. Maintaining altitude the whole time. See, now I undershot just a little. It's a little better. I think it's better to undershoot a little than overshoot because if you undershoot, you'll exit the turn too soon. That was a really extreme example. You'll exit the turn too soon and you'll see it. See, if I undershoot, well, I kind of hit that one. You, you, you're yawing, and so if I end the turn too soon, I, I can see that that's happening and adjust to swing a little wide and hit it. But if I overshoot, I don't see the gate until it's already too late. No, now I've missed it. So if you're going to err in a direction, I think err in the direction of being a little too tight rather than a little too wide. And you may also find you benefit from putting a little extra yaw in so that you're not quite perfectly coordinated, but you're yawing just a little flat, and that helps it come into view sooner. And so here is what I might call a well-coordinated turn. And let me slow down a little so I'm not going too fast. And here is more of a flatter turn that brings it into view earlier and helps me, helps me line up the turn. So again, a little flatter turn now with a little more yaw and a little less roll that helps bring it into, into view and helps me line it up. Okay, now do this slowly. Do it very slowly and smoothly is your goal. You want to come out of the turn just perfectly lined up on it as best you can. Start looking for references on the ground and other places that'll help tell you whether you're lined up correctly before you, uh, before the gate comes into view. So I'm looking for marks on the ground, my position relative to that, to that shed. Here is easy because there's a, there's a dirt path that's kind of been worn. I can see whether I'm lining up on it correctly. This one's a little harder because there's nothing, there's not as many markers coming into it, but you'll start to get a sense of where you are. And you really want to just end that turn as best you can right on your mark. So you don't want to get into a situation where you're having to adjust to get it clean. I'll do another one. Here, I'm going to be a little too tight. And now I'm going to have to swing wide to, to, to get there. Ideally, you will want to just come right up on it and straight through. And then as you start to get better at this, start to pick up your speed a little. You can pick up your speed by pitching forward and throttling up, and it'll get a little harder. And you'll notice I slowed down as I ended the turn because I wasn't sure if I was lined up. As you gain speed, it's going to be a little harder not to gain altitude. 
keep doing this. Oh, a little wide there, that's okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. As you continue to gain speed, you're gonna have to pitch and you're gonna have to pitch and, and roll more to keep it tight. And yaw more, and you're gonna just need more control input altogether. And you're gonna get less margin oh, that was an accident. You're gonna get less margin of error to correct because it's gonna be coming up on you faster. Don't, if you start gaining speed, don't sort of cheat by swinging really wide. I mean, whatever, do the exercise however you feel like doing it. But, but I think if you start speeding up and you start just swinging really wide, now I'm gaining altitude, I'm getting really sloppy. That's not ideal. I mean, I, I prefer, I think that you'll get the most benefit if you try to keep it tight. Because that's that's harder. Just and notice that my turns. I'm trying to make my turns as consistent as possible. So I establish the turn, and then I hold it, and I try to establish it correctly, as opposed to having to make a bunch of corrections in the middle of the turn. So once the turn is set up correctly, I want to just hold it and make little adjustments as. Ooh, a bigger adjustment than that. Make little adjustments as need be. All right, so give that exercise some practice. Um, and that, I think, I think that's a really good exercise for, for practicing things like flying through gates, like in these race gates, right? I mean, these race gates are just, what you're doing here is you're just trying to hit those marks, right? And, and you actually are at an advantage here because you can really see every one of them coming as opposed to that one where they're kind of coming out of nowhere, okay? You're turning into them. The other thing is that a lot of times when, I, when you're doing uh, FPV acro flight, uh, you won't always see the marks that you're trying to hit coming. So you may be flying and you do some kind of cool move uh, and then you're coming around and there's your mark right there out of nowhere. Okay, so being able to line up a mark that you know is coming but maybe that your viewer doesn't know is coming and then you surprise them and it looks awesome that's a good skill to have uh being able to line up a mark that you know is coming in a race course there's no guarantee i mean this is a relatively simple race course laid out here there's no guarantee in a race that you'll be able to see every single turn and every single mark that you need to hit coming before it gets there so i think this this little uh you know figure eight drill th is a great drill for helping you gain spatial awareness, gain more precision uh, controls and where you are relative to the mark you're trying to hit. And as you begin to pick up speed, it starts to teach you more about high-speed cornering. You know, uh, high-speed cornering, we certainly could think of high-speed cornering like, like this kind of pylon style cornering, right? But in reality, when you're going for high-speed cornering, smooth is your goal so so you really and I, I think I'll talk about more about this in a future video you really want smooth you don't want oh, you don't want a crash up that's for sure what you don't want is you don't want to get going so fast that then you have to turn rapidly to get your mark okay see how that's really jerky turns and not smooth Right, that's not good flying, and that's not fast flying. Good fast flying will be as smooth as possible, with as little a correction as possible, and as efficient a line as possible. This isn't, by the way, this is hardly a record-setting run, but little corrections, always lining up your marks, and uh, not crashing into anything. Okay, so I think this is a great drill to practice that. Have fun with that, play with that, and I'll see you next time.